Muscles! Yay! So many wonderful muscles that we have inside our bodies and so many different types. We're going to go ahead and start off by distinguishing between the three. We've talked about these three already in AMP1, but it would be remiss not to go ahead and mention just a little bit more of that detail. Again, skeletal muscle, you can, there's a lot of neat and unique things about it, and it is mostly associated with the skeletal system, with a few that don't directly attach to it, but they still have some type of anchor there, direct or indirect. They often move muscles, there are also quite a few other things that they do, other than just move bones. They help you stay propped up, they help you um, talk, they help you speak, they help keep things and foods inside when you want them inside, such as urine and fecal material. What If I were to give you a slide between the three different things, you would want to note that the skeletal muscles are very striated and each muscle cell is multinucleated, meaning it has several nuclei. You can also have control over it. Cardiac muscle, it's pretty much a cylindrical, but it also forks off. It's located in the heart, and obviously its function is to be pumping blood. One major difference between the cardiac muscle and the skeletal muscle is that it's only one nucleus inside it per cell. It is indeed striated, very similar in that sense, but it also inter has intercalated discs, which, only allow certain, which are composed of gap junctions that allow for nutrients and other, th and other things to go ahead and cross through. Thankfully, this is involuntary. You can't control it. There is no control over it. It is an autonomic nervous system. It's under control of the autonomic nervous system. Then finally, we got ourselves the smooth muscle. This is the stuff that's in your viscera, that's in within a lot of your organs. For instance, your GI tract is composed of a lot of them. You got sinkers inside your GI tract that only allow certain amounts of materials to make it through your stomach, from your stomach into your intestine, or your intestine to the, a portion of your anus that gives you that urge to need to go to the restroom. Peristalsis is a really fancy way of moving food through, fancy word for saying moving food through your digestive tract. You also have other things such as dilating or constricting blood vessels. Your uh, uterus has smooth muscle in it. The Urinary system has smooth muscle in it. A lot of places have smooth muscle. They are one nuclei and they do not have the striations. They're, the way that they're bundled up is quite different and we'll be talking about in a little while. They are involuntary as well. You could be sitting in a closet trying to hide from, a, since it's near Halloween when I'm recording this, hiding from Jason Voorhees and you can't tell it to stop gurgling. We're going to be talking or taking most of our view of this stuff via the skeletal system and when we're talking about the microstructures of the muscle, the cells, and all that stuff. With that, let's go ahead and dive into it. Skeletal muscle, when it forms, it's via fusion. If you've seen this anime before with it's called Dragon Ball Z, they do a little fusion where two people can merge together. So fusion here is the combination Go, uh, muscle myoblasts into one skeletal muscle, hence why you get a multinucleated skeletal muscle. You're going to notice as we're studying this that there are a lot of components that's within a component, 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 within a component all of which serve to try and sort of, well not sort of, but actually move or complete its purpose. The easiest way to describe this rather than going by piece by piece is actually to go via the math method called that I've created called the Matryoshka doll. The Matryoshka doll is the little Russian doll where you put a wooden doll within a wooden doll within a wooden doll within a wooden doll within a wooden doll. And that Matryoshka doll it explains the muscles set up really quite nicely. There's a, the smallest unit, there's actually five units that you need to be familiar with all of which fall, fit one within another. I'm going to be taking the, this table from our book, table 10.3, and using it to help me go ahead and describe these P 
piece by piece by piece. And afterwards, we'll go into more detail about the muscle cell itself. So this is a muscle organ. We're seeing it directly connected to the bone via a tendon. Reminder that a tendon is muscle to bone, while a ligament is bone to bone. We got a muscle with a skeletal muscle. It's the skeletal organ, the skeletal belly going on right here. It is covered in something called an epimesium. It's a connective tissue called the epimesium. Let's break that word down really quick. Anything that says myo or my like this will refer to muscle. Anything with myo, M-Y-O or M-Y in it means muscle. And epi means above or beyond and just at the top of the tippy top of the whole thing. So we got the outermost portion, the tippy top portion of that muscle, and it's that covering, so eum, mesium. If we were to take a closer look, we're coming down here. Notice that this is pretty much, this next part right here, this is actually just looking at this blunt end right here. We cut off, we're not looking at the bone, we're not looking at the muscle belly anymore. We are looking at this portion. We're looking right here, this right here. We have pulled this out, I uh, forgive me. We have pulled out a wire, kind of like the pull and peel Twizzlers. We have pulled out that pull and peel Twizzler and we are now looking at the inside of that one string of pull and peel Twizzler. This bundle, one of these multiple several bundles inside a skeletal muscle is called a fascicle. This is the second Matryoshka doll. This is called a fascicle. The fascicle contain is covered by an aperimesium. I already wanted to go into my French weird dorky accent. It's probably not even French at all. But let's break down a couple of these words. You'll know a fascicle is a bundle of muscle cells and covering one of these fascicles or bundling it up together to become a fascicle is called this paramesium. Let's break that word down. Myo or my again means muscle. Peri means around. So Oh, uh -huh, Paris, this is a connective tissue that is going around or so parrying around the, the fascicle. Yeah, I, I have a terrible French accent. I need to work on that. Anyway, we got the fascicle bundled up together, the paramecium, but luck would have it, you have taken a microscope to your pull and peel Twizzlers, and you have noticed, hey, these guys are Willy Wonka style on their candy here. There is a pull appeal within a pull appeal. We are getting down to the third Matryoshka doll. We have pulled out of this fascicle a muscle fiber. A muscle fiber is a muscle cell. A muscle fiber is a muscle cell. A muscle fiber is a muscle cell. It is covered by several things. But for now, we're going to be talking just right now about the connective tissue and then what's inside that muscle, but very briefly. There's a connective tissue covering a muscle fiber, aka muscle cell, called the endomesia. Let's find that word really quick. Do, 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 do. Oh yes, I remember where it is now. It is right here. That endomesium is covering the outside of the cell. It's as a connective tissue to sort of help embrace it and keep the cell intact in a way. So the endomesium, let's break that word down. Endo means inside. My or myo means muscle, yeah. So you got the inside covering of a muscle. So you got an endomesium covering this. Within that covering is the outside cell membrane. Because it is covering a muscle cell, or this is a membrane of a muscle cell, it gets its own very special name called the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma is the, the cell membrane. When within it, you're going to notice there's even more pull and peel twizzards. Those Willy Wonka wizards, they've even outdone themselves. They put a pull and peel twizzer in a pull and peel in a pull and peel. Within that pull and peel is a myofibril. This is where you see the functioning units of the muscle. This is the itty bitty teeny tiny little Matryoshka doll inside that does all the work. Is the mastermind. What is that even accent up? Anyway, sarcomere. 
And this is your sarcomere. Your myofibril is part of your sarcomere. This sarcomere gives you those striations, going back just a little ways. Remember these bad boys, these light, dark lines that we call them striations? Notice that they are there on these sarcomeres, and they give it that darker color to it. And those are your striations. Within the sarcomere are different proteins, lots and lots of different proteins. All these structures that you see here are proteins. And this is the final matrushka doll. You got thin filaments and you've got thick filaments. Thin filaments are actin, thick filaments are myosin. Thin filaments are actin, thick filaments are myosin. Thin, actin, thick, myosin. So let's do a really quick thing. We're gonna run through this. Remember that we got a muscle, that is the muscle organ, is the muscle belly we got. And with the covering that muscle belly is that epimesium. Epi means up and above, and myo or my also refers to muscle. So epimyo or epimysium. Epimysium gives you the bundle, the connective tissue around that muscle. Let's sneak down to the second matrushka doll. We got the fascicle. And this is your pollen peel magic going off. The normal pollen peel. You peeled away and you got yourself this thing coming off of it. The fascicle is also covered, but it is covered in something called the perimesium. Peri means around. This is like somebody buying a, a sword attack to be offensive. That's why the French accent. Now I probably understand why I did the French accent. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah, that was a terrible accent. Moving on. Perimesium. Peri means around, myo, or my means muscle, zium is reference to a connective tissue, so paramesium. If we then notice with our sharp keen eyes that our pull and peel strand that we've just pulled off has even more pull and peel strands, it's microscopic scopic almost, and we peel it off and it is indeed a muscle fiber. That muscle fiber needs some connective tissue support. So around it is called the endomesium. Endo means inside and my means muscle. So endomesium, you got the layer of connective tissue surrounding a, cell, a muscle fiber or that muscle cell. Within that muscle cell, you're gonna have your myofibrils. This is the ones that have the sacromeres. This is the one that has a functioning unit, which is called the sarcomere, sorry. And then within those myofibrils, you've got the myofilaments, which are the thick and thin filaments. Thick equaling the myosin, thin equaling the actin. Now that we've gone through the matrushka doll thing, I think we need to dive a little bit deeper into what the cell looks like. We are looking at a muscle fiber here. We cut open a fascicle. Here is our muscle fiber within that fascicle. We've got the endomesium circling around it, and then that nice blue color is that sarcolemma. I cracked open this a little bit further. This is your muscle fiber here. There's that blue color here, blue color here, sarcolemma. That is your cell membrane. Let's progress just a little bit further into this. We're gonna look at the sarcoplasm. That's a really fancy way of saying cytoplasm, but for muscles. Cytoplasm, remember, is that liquid that filled the cells. Sarcoplasm is the liquid that filled the cells. There is one last structure I want to look at right here because it's extremely important and it's really neat to see how they are organized and structured is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Those of you that studied well and studied hard, well, that's pretty much all of you if you're here in AMP2, is that endoplasmic reticulum sounds very familiar to that. They have modified that name to make certain that it references the endoplas modified endoplasmic reticulum that's within the muscle fiber or the muscle cell. Notice that it isn't just disorganized chaos. It is actually organized into T-tubules. It's organized into little columns. This thing is so, so super important to the functioning of the muscle fiber. So it's so that sarcoplasmic reticulum contains calcium. Calcium is a huge, huge thing in helping muscles move. 
without calcium, you're going to get fatigued muscles. You can say, hey, muscles move when you're trying to, but it's hard. It's very hard to do so. Or maybe you're not even going to be able to do it. Here is a dummy down version of that. Here is our muscle cell. There is our sarcoplasmic reticulum. There's that transverse tubule or that T-tubule I talked about. There is our myofilaments, our myofibers. Our myofibrils, there we go. Within it, you'll also find some myoglobin, which holds on to oxygen, as well as glycogen molecules, which is just a really bunch of bunch of glucose conglomerated together. Finally, but the, to end this video, we're going to talk about the structure of the sarcomere. This is the functioning unit, remember. This is the one that gives the muscles the striations. You do see this in smooth muscle, but the, because they're so far dispersed, you don't see those striations. So the sarcomere is this little unit right here, starting off with this line here and this line here. This, these lines are called Z-discs. Z-discs. They are the, these Z-discs combine and, and attach to the thin filaments. Notice, again, this is the thick filament here that we see here. Look how nice and bulky it is compared to these thin filaments here. These thin filaments attach to these Z-discs, and it's sort of like an anchoring point. Is also a point where one sarcomere is going to connect to another sarcomere. On this side, you'll have a sarcomere. On this side, you'll have a sarcomere. But we're just going to look at this cute little box right here. Moving on, right smack dab in the middle is the M. The M line. Middle. In the middle is the M line. It is the very center of that sarcomere, and it has a role of keeping those thick filaments in line and not letting them escape or wobble all over the place. Let us move on. We have the A band and the I band. The A band is the entire length, the entire length of the thick filament. The A band is the entire length of the thick filament. It gets an A because its brain is super thick and strong, yo. We finally have the I band as well, which is where the thin filaments are only. Thin filaments are only located in the I band. We also have the H zone. This is the zone that is exclusively thick filaments. You'll notice in the A band that both the thick and the thin filaments can interact at these points, but the H zone is solely thick filament. I band is only thi is only thin filament. H zone is only thick filament. So when you are contracting, what happens is these things right here, these thick filaments, will creep up into this space and pull them into the H zone, which means that the I band and the H zone decrease in size when you make it work. So in a way, when you shake your hand up and down, you're saying hi. And that's how your muscles say hi. They use the H zone and the I zone. The H and the I zone disappear to say hi. We are going to end here with this slide on muscle proteins, and then we'll get into more details about how the sarcomere works and how these things work. This is a cartoonized version that you're gonna to wanna to care about anyways. Here's our sarcomere, here's our H zone. Again, that's only thick filaments. I zone is only, th I zone. I band is right here in thin filaments, thin filaments only. But the A band is the entire length of the thick filaments. If we were to pull it out and look at it, we would see actin, these little yellow dot drops, myosin, which is that thick filament again, and then we got ourselves some titin or titan. 
Titan is sort of the shock absorber. You'll notice it. I actually had some, one of the professors that developed this from it, down from Arizona up in, when I was taking my research studies or doing my master's degree. We had him come guest lecture and he talked about his discovery of the titan uh, protein and the things that they are learning about how to use and use it and help the human populace. They found that if you are able to exercise and stabilize that titan protein, that falls are less likely to happen, especially in the geriatric patient. So we talked about myosin, we talked about actin. Myosin is that thick filament, actin is that thin filament. Troponin and tropomyosin we're gonna be talking about here in a little while, but troponin and tropomyosin are interlaced with actin, we'll talk about them. And these other five, there's a lot of information about them, but the only one I kinda of really care about is this titan, probably because I'm just interested in it. With that, that is the end of this recording. We will be chatting or you'll be listening to me again in part two.